Hello everyone. This is Bharat Singla and I am a school student in class 10 and a five star coder on Codeship. I was also declared the national winner of Google's Code to Learn contest. Today let us discuss the problem the two dishes from Codeship's first September starters. The difficulty is cakewalk and let's quickly have a look at it. So fun fact I haven't seen the problem yet. I haven't solved the problem yet. All I know is that since the difficulty is cakewalk, I should be able to solve it. And through this unique pedagogy, I hope that you will be able to understand this, how to approach the problem. So you have two dishes, with a tastiness T1 and T2, and uh, they are between zero and n. Okay. Then chef has forgotten the values of T1, T2, but remembers the sum of the tastiness of the dishes denoted by S. Now he wonders what can be the maximum possible absolute difference between the tastiness. Okay, does the solution always exist? You have n and s given. Okay, so it's given here. You have that a solution always exists. Basically, my doubt was that t1 plus t2 should be equal to s. Both of them should be between n. But what if s is very large? So if it's greater than 2n, then even if you take the maximum possible, that's n and n for both. You will still the maximum sum you can get is 2n. So in a way, it's given that s is less than equals to n, two times n. Great. So we want them to be as distant as possible and follow these two conditions. Fine. Let's have a look at a sample. So we have three one. So the range is zero to three. So the sum we want is one. So obviously there are only two choices: zero one one zero. In both the cases, the difference you get is one. Right. So clearly they follow the condition of being in the range from zero to three and having the sum one. Fine. So we have to report the maximum absolute difference, the farthest possible uh, integers. Yes. So I think I do have a solution for this. So let's start off with the code. I'll explain it uh, when we cross the bridge. So you have the input for test cases. Then you have n and s. Right. And then there are obviously two cases that we'll form. So we have if s is less than equal to n, right? In this case, what's happening is that you can simply take zero and s. Now why? Well, this is because zero and s sum up to n. We are assuming the case that s is less than equals to n, so both of these values are between zero and n. And if you carefully see, taking one and s minus one, right? Or taking two and s minus two, although they all sum up to s, but you brought two integers close. Right, that's not what we want. We want to keep them as far as possible, so we get zero and s. In this case, obviously the difference is s, right? And we have the other case would be two. Maybe I'm not sure about this yet, so we can maybe take up s minus n and n. Okay, so let's take up a example. So you have. n equals seven, s equals ten. So in this case, the range is from zero to seven, and the sum is ten. So if you carefully see, the minimum value we can take is three, because if we take zero, one, two, and even if the second one is as large as possible, that is seven, right? The sum still won't be ten. For the sum to be ten, and the maximum value we can take is seven, we, the other one has to be at least three, right? If it is three, then it this is seven, right? So this obviously works. Taking s minus n, that is 10 minus 7, that is 3, the minimum possible value, and accordingly to have the sum as s, the other value should be n. And if you again taking the similar thought process we used above, if I take s minus n plus 1, that is instead of 3 I take 4, and then towards just that I will have to take n minus 1, that is 6 instead of 7. Again, as you can see, 4 and 6 sum up to 10. Three and seven also sum up to ten, but obviously we bought again the two integers closer. So this isn't optimal. That's sub optimal. So we will take s minus n and s, and the absolute difference that comes out here is n minus s plus n minus basically n minus s minus n. That translates into n minus s plus n. That becomes two n minus s. So we'll output n into two minuses. Uh, hopefully this should work at least on the samples, right? So that I don't have to re-record it. So let's quickly run it. 
And yes, we do get one for one. I guess that's the expected output. So let's quickly copy this code. Yes, one for one was the expected output. So as you can see, I haven't solved it yet. So no take is appearing. Right. And yeah, I hope through this you understood the thought process behind how to solve a problem or how to approach it. I know a lot of people are, uh, a lot of you are asking and requesting for please tell us the approach. So here is the approach. So yep, let's hit the submit button and hope for an AC. So yes, this does get accepted. And if you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. Have any query, suggestion, or anything you want me to read, post it down in the comment section and share it with anyone whom you think may find it useful. This is Bharat Sindla from Codeshare signing off for now, and I will see you next time.